Hi, it's Joe from Advanced Glazings, makers of Solera and Solera Wall. This is our third episode of Daylighting Tech Tips for Architects. We're about to begin a multi-episode discussion about glare. Today, we're gonna to define glare and learn what causes it. To understand glare, we first need to talk about your eyes. When you're outside in the sunshine or you're in a brightly lit room, your pupils constrict down to about two to four millimeters for adults. If they didn't constrict, your eyes would bring in too much light. In a dark area, they dilate or they open to about four to eight millimeters to let in more light. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to see as well. So what happens when you have both light and dark within your line of sight? Well, it's extremely uncomfortable because your pupils can't be constricted and dilated at the same time. Uh, that, my friends, is what glare is all about. It's the intense discomfort you experience when your pupils are faced with dark and bright conditions simultaneously. So I think we all know how that plays out in architecture. When you have a bright surface, like the beam of light from a vision glass window, or the window itself, and the immediately adjacent surface or the overall ambient light level is much less bright, you are in a situation where your eyes are simply not designed to cope. Now the magic ratio is about 10 to one. In other words, if you have two surfaces within your line of sight and one of those surfaces is 10 times brighter than ambient light levels or brighter than the immediately adjacent surface, it's going to be unbearable. So how do we get glare in a building? Well, why can we see through transparent glass? You can see through it because it lets light through completely unabated. In other words, vision glass does not alter the directionality of the light. So all that light comes through in a concentrated beam, which is typically much brighter than ambient light levels, and it's much brighter than the surfaces that are not being touched by the beam. And again, if that ratio is greater than 10 to 1, you've got a problem. So your job as a designer is to keep that ratio below 10 to 1 in the functional spaces. Now, if you don't, the building owner or the occupants will need to resolve the problem themselves, and they will invariably do so with blinds. In the next episode, we're going to talk about the consequences that could come with blinds. And then after that, we'll talk about conventional solutions and the serious shortcomings to those solutions. Thanks for joining us. Stay in the sunshine. Mm -hmm.